scrambling to write things down. So I thought that might be a good idea. Okay, so anyway, this is about engaging your loved one at home during COVID-19. You can go to the next. So Open Circle, I work at the Open Circle of Heritage Park actually, and we provide, all of our Open Circles provide a safe, welcoming environment for your loved one. We focus on the person, their interests, strengths and abilities because their stories and talents inspire us. Open Circle is a place where everyone knows your name. So if you have more questions about Open Circle, want to go on a tour, um, you can talk to Patty Ryan or myself, Janine McQuillan, and our number's listed there. And we can also refer you to our other Open Circles, depending where you live. Okay. So today we're going to learn about what does it mean to keep someone engaged? the importance of engagement, and also creative ways to engage, and some simple resources to kind of to get you started at home. So to engage, it's to occupy, attract, or involve someone's interest or attention, and to participate or become involved. And engagement is something that we work on with our members when they come. We don't want them just sitting and not being engaged. And when you have people at home that you're caring for, engagement is really important. Okay. So meaningful engagement. Meaningful engagement expands a person's connections with the world around them in a physical, mental, social, emotional, and spiritual way. So it's something that will connect for them. It's an opportunity to participate in a variety of activities that have meaning for that individual. So in order for them to engage, it needs to be something meaningful or something that they might be interested in. Okay. So meaningful engagement. Hopefully this will empower care partners to maintain a positive experience, reduce and possibly eliminate the need for certain medications, support a good quality of life for everyone, and create an opportunity to enjoy the simple pleasures of daily life. And this is last one I think is the most important, to create lasting memories. So we didn't realize we were making memories. We just knew we were having fun. And that's one thing we say around Open Circle. You know, while we're making memories, we are just having fun. And those are the things that we remember the most. So engagement with dementia. If you have a loved one with Alzheimer's or actually any form of dementia, um, trying to keep them busy and engaged is really a challenge for care partners. Among the challenges is boredom. So if you have someone that you can't engage, they may just be sitting in front of the TV and it can quickly evolve into anxiety and paranoia. Sticking to a schedule with planned activity times can help Keep a care recipient happy, engaged, less anxious, and more agreeable. And what I mean by this, it's not like you have to keep them engaged all day long, but to have some specific times that you sit down and do something together. So tips for communication. I think these are things that, you know, we as staff work with, but this will help family members, care partners, um, being patient, communicating effectively is really a challenge for seniors living with dementia. Um, and it's difficult for them sometimes to get their words out. So being patient and tolerating any delays, frustrations, provocations they might have, it might just take a little time. And offering reassurance when they can't get the words out, they get very frustrated. And so just being patient, listening and empathizing with their concerns, even if they're delusional, they may not make any sense, they might be confused, um, they might hesitate or even be angry. And if you just say, I'm sorry that you're so angry today, what can I do? And just say, it's gonna be okay. And just offer that simple reassurance. And minimize background noise. That's another thing is, you know, in our homes, we might have the TV going, the doorbell, all kinds of noises going on. And if you have dementia, it's really 
frustrating and confusing. And so finding a quiet place that they can be to talk away from TV, radio, or just even a lot of people passing by. A lot of our folks, when I was making wellness calls, were in quite a chaotic situation with grandchildren running around the room, the TV blaring, people walking, walking around, and I thought, oh my, <laughs> that is agitating to me on the phone trying to talk to um, the care recipients. So it, it, it's hard. Avoid arguing. So when talking, make sure you're in front of them. Speak in a clear, warm tone and speak slowly. Simple sentences and just be patient and give them time to respond. And whatever they say, don't contradict them. Just listen, because in their world, that's what they believe. So it doesn't pay to argue. It gets them more frustrated and just sitting and listening can make all the difference. Using nonverbal cues, gestures, touch, and facial expressions can really assist you with communication. We don't always have to talk. And people with dementia, it takes a lot of energy for them to figure out what you're saying when you're using a lot of words. So the more nonverbal cues that you can use, the better. And really look at, you know, why are they doing this? What are they trying to indicate to me? Um, there might be feelings behind the words they're saying. Maybe they're agitated because they have to go to the bathroom and they just can't tell you that. And keeping it simple, just focusing on one subject at a time. And a lot of times, just ask questions with a simple yes or no. And I can't say this enough. We always tell our staff this, but this is really true for our family members um, is taking care of yourself. Be sure you get enough rest. But the big one is asking for help. Care partners need to take time for themselves and it usually involves planning ahead. But that respite time is important if you're not getting enough sleep in um, and you need help. Focus on making memories. Just remember there's going to be good days and bad days, but focusing on making memories and the time you have together, that can make all the difference. Okay. So a sense of purpose. We all need to feel needed and to have a sense of purpose. So how can we feel like we have a sense of purpose? Um, I did mention having a daily schedule, getting up at the same time every day, um, getting up, having breakfast or coffee, whatever they're used to, um, but find a regular time, familiar tasks they can do, and connections with others. Continue relationships and even try building new relationships. And I do have some ideas on ways we can do that. Okay. So what is purposeful? Household tasks such as sweeping, dusting, meal preparation. It can be something simple. Mixing salads, snapping beans, washing fruits and vegetables, folding laundry outdoor tasks, like right now, we're going to have to do some raking, weeding the garden, sweeping the patio or the sidewalk, but things, anything that we would normally do, those are purposeful activities. Activities of interest. So when you're trying to think about what kinds of things could I do to engage my loved one? Well, think about what they've done in the past. Sports, did they participate or were they a spectator? Needle arts like crochet, knitting, embroidery, sewing, art and craft projects, culinary arts like baking, canning, cooking, music, did they perform or did they just like listening to music, movies, reading, travel, exercise, and groups? What kind of groups have they belonged to? Maybe church groups, book clubs, were they a community volunteer? neighborhood gatherings that they enjoyed. And we're gonna talk about how to adapt some of these. So trying new activities. As we age, we do have more time to try new things. So care recipients and care partners might enjoy trying new activities. We're so fortunate to live in the Twin Cities. There's so many things that we can do here. Traveling to local sites like Minnehaha Falls, the Art Institute, 
um, the History Museum, taking short day trips to Winona, Brainerd, or even driving up to the North Shore. Music, there's choirs that you can belong to, drumming, discovering a new genre of music to enjoy. There's art classes, art museums, crafts, and photography. And exercise, you know, have they belonged to the Y? Um, fitness clubs, walking groups, bowling. So how do we adapt activities during this difficult time? Um, as people change, um, which might include cognitive, fine motor, or other physical limitations, many activities from the past could be adapted. But, you know, this is the pandemic time, so um, we can look at some ways to adapt things that they might try um, if it wasn't the pandemic and creative solutions so they can have a wide range of things that they can participate in. So we're going to try um, to talk a little bit about exploring those activities. Okay. So sports, if they were a golfer, you can still go to the driving ranges, just wear your mask. They can practice putting in the backyard maybe going miniature golfing with a grandchild using masks and social distancing, or you could set up your own mini golf course in the backyard. Disc golf, I don't know if anybody has played disc golf, but it, the discs are kind of like Frisbees, and there's lots of local um, places that you can play disc golf, and it's really popular today. But that might be a new activity that you could try with your loved one. Bowling, you, you could still bowl, try using a lot of lighter ball, bumper bowling, especially with grandchildren. And I do believe some of the bowling alleys are open right now. Um, they alternate how many um, alleys they have and they're not next to each other. Biking, um, just a suggestion, a bicycle built for two, you can rent those and the tandem bikes are really fun. And you can put your loved one on and go for a bike ride together. Um, exercising, there's lots of exercise videos that I'll show you online. We'll talk about walking, exercise bikes, light weights, and what I mean by light is the one or two pound weights, and yoga for seniors. Needle arts, things that you can do at home, rolling balls of yarn, knitting or crocheting, and my suggestion is to try things that don't require a pattern, like a scarf because sometimes reading those patterns gets confusing, but they can, they can crochet or knit scarves. No sew blankets with fleece and you just tie them. There's all kinds of colors and prints available and there's kits, embroidery kits, sewing projects available, fabric dyeing, tie dye projects like t-shirts or sweatshirts. There's a gentleman trying to sew there in that picture. <laughs> okay. Arts and crafts. Acrylic painting on canvas. If you go to Michael's or one of the local craft stores, um, you can buy canvases very inexpensively in all different sizes. You can try using a picture for inspiration. Um, another thing you can do is use watercolors, markers, and colored pencils with adult coloring pages. I even like the adult coloring pages. It's very relaxing. Many easy craft kits are available, and we're going to talk about the craft ideas online. But I do want you to keep in mind anything with small pieces, like, you know, beading is really popular, making necklaces and bracelets. But those beads, if they have confusion, they may think it's candy. And also to be careful with scissors or glues that could be toxic if they touch the glue and put it to their mouth. Um, they could get burned. So just look for those glue, the glues that are not toxic. Culinary arts. I did mention this meal preparation, snapping green beans. When my father retired early, he drove my mother crazy, seriously. And so she had him involved in meal preparation. And she'd say, here, you know, snap the green beans. Can you peel these vegetables since I'm making soup today? Um, and a peeler works really well instead of a knife. Making toast, scrambling eggs, stirring soups together, baking with a partner, really easy. Cookies, cakes, and even kneading bread. And there's a lot of no-bake cookies and candy recipes online that you can find. Cake decorating is fun. And cupcakes, I really, I really like the cupcake idea because they can choose to 
decorate every single cupcake differently and nothing is wrong. So in music, singing along to favorite music, you can pull up music with lyrics if you have access to a computer or a tablet, drumming, other rhythm instruments like tambourine with music, marches, reggae, anything with a strong, a strong beat. And there are actually drumming circles online, virtual drumming circles that you can join, and those are quite fun. There's virtual singing groups, and there's lots of concerts available online. A lot of our folks here at Open Circle love to dance to music. So I just turn on that dancing music and they're up there dancing, but it's a good way to get a little exercise in and stretching in as well. Okay. Movies and television, of course, watching old favorite movies. Um, the movie's too long, they fall asleep. So a lot of times breaking it up with a snack or stretching. Television, we always tell people to limit your TV time because it's not engaging, it's not interactive. But if you do short amounts of TV, like game shows, 30 minute sitcoms, you can sit and watch and laugh together, movies made for TV. And a lot of the fun things to do with a partner are like travel shows, Animal Planet, cooking shows and sports. My younger son used to spend a lot of time with my mom, with grandma. And, you know, he's quite a quiet person. And he, he would tell me, I just don't know what to say to grandma. She keeps asking me all these questions. I don't want to talk. And I said, why don't you turn on the cooking channel? Because the both of you enjoy that. And they got into these cooking shows and the competitions and they had more fun. So there's a lot of fun things you can do with TV shows if you pick the right, the right one for your loved one that they would be interested in. Okay, reading, favorite magazines. There's a lot of books on tape, CDs, online, and some of these um, resources you'll see later. But Audible is one of many online audiobook sites. And the reading, grandchildren can practice reading, care partners can read, try and favor books or authors, short stories, poetry, um, and Bible verses. And another thing, there are really a lot of coffee table style books with great photographs. And that's something that can spark conversation and memories too. Puzzles, word searches, there's printable versions online. You can purchase the word search books in large print. There's word jumbles, mazes, easy crossword puzzles available, and jigsaw puzzles. Um, if they're able to do jigsaw puzzles, and they come in all size pieces, and you know, from easy to more challenging puzzles are available. It's a fun project to spend a little time working on a puzzle with a care partner or a grandchild or anyone in the family. If a table's set up, you just work on pieces as you go. And that can be a lot of fun. And games, things to think about. Monopoly, checkers, board games with grandchildren like Candyland, Shoots and Ladders. There's card games, hearts and spades. War is an easy game and you can do it however you want to do it, but the high card is put down, that is put down, takes all the cards. Dice games, you can still play Yahtzee. Um, when my mother was losing her vision, we played Yahtzee and I would tell her, you know, what to roll for and keep score. And so she could still have fun playing Yahtzee and just doing doubles with the dice. Okay. Um, and some things you can do if you enjoy traveling or they enjoy traveling. Day trips to the state parks, lakes, looking at the leaves, old neighborhoods. When I was growing up, we always took a Sunday drive and a lot of people enjoy those drives. Virtual trips, you can visit almost any city in the world and tourist destinations with a virtual tour online. Museums all over the world offer free virtual tours. And one thing I think is fun is planning a trip for some time in the future. It might be something you'll actually do, or it could just be a dream trip and make a collage of the places you want to visit or a scrapbook. Very fun thing to do. Um, churches, many churches, as far as groups, have online services, but there's also some drive up outdoor church services offered locally. Neighborhood and family gatherings outdoor with social distancing. 
while we still have the good weather. Online groups. There's special interest groups and it's just endless. You can join book clubs, chat groups, or you can make up your own weekly gathering online. So have family members that don't live close or family visitors that aren't visiting because of COVID. Put them on at a set time every week and they can chat and have fun and catch up. Reminiscing, I always think this is the greatest opportunity for engagement is to reminisce. A lot of people might not remember what they had for lunch because of short-term memory loss, but they usually retain their long-term memories for a lot longer time. So having that opportunity to reminisce can be really enjoyable. Family pictures are a great way to start conversations. And prompting family stories. I always think it's really important that we share our family stories with the younger generation and for the younger family members to participate with the reminisce, whether it's online or in person. And asking, what games did you play when you were a child? Jacks, marbles? A lot of the kids have no idea what jacks are. What are marbles? Jump rope. Um, what was your favorite subject in grade school? Did you do chores? What kind of chores did they have to do? And it's, it is a great thing to do with younger family members. And those family photo albums are also a wonderful way to prompt conversations about the past. And one of my friends actually that, um, that has dementia, her husband through Facebook um, got her a book. They bound a hardcover book with all of their travel photos. There is a charge, but this, this book is absolutely beautiful. So that is something you could consider too. Um, if you have a lot of wonderful family pictures on Facebook, they, you can purchase a hardcover book. Touch. This is something we don't always think about, but touch is such an important thing. Um, hand massages with lotion, gentle neck and shoulder massage, even brushing hair. You know, when you go to the beauty shop um, for women, it feels so good that if you have your hair washed and they do a little hair massage and they brush your hair. Holding hands, those are simple things that can make a lot of difference. And then smell, you know, you can make a game of it. What spice is this? Do you like the smell of this? Essential oils, lavender can help to calm people and it could be really helpful at bedtime. Um, I know when I was in the hospital, they have little patches of lavender that they would just um, stick on my nightgown. And it was very relaxing and helped me go to sleep. And so purchasing those essential oils and trying a little bit on the person's pillowcase can be helpful. You can also get diffusers. Um, if you have someone that you need to wake them up a little bit, try some peppermint. Taste, this is a fun one. You can try your own taste test. Um, something fun to try and you just make a game of it. Beverages, there's so many different flavors of Coke. So that's kind of fun to try the different flavors of Coke. Um, all the flavored creamers, if they like cream in their coffee. Snacks, we've done this. We've bought a lot of the different flavors of chips to try. Um, popcorn seasonings, different varieties of apples. We actually did that today here at Open Circle. Um, because we had a little apple program and we were trying the different flavors of apples and deciding which we like best. Sweets, um, they have flavored jelly beans, chocolates, mints, gum. There's so many different things to try and you can just make it kind of a fun thing to do together. Crafts, okay, so some of our resources. Michael's is a great place to go if you haven't been to Michael's. Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics, and then there is this other place called Art Scraps. It's located in St. Paul, and people call it just a magical place. They have thousands of beads, fabric scraps, objects of wood, brass, and plastic. Um, there are literally thousands of websites for craft ideas, but just to get you started, um, these are three of the ones that I like. Pinterest, that if you if you pull that up, just put crafts for seniors, 
Um, and then they also have an area where ideas for crafts when working with dementia. And then another one is the Golden Carers. Carers? I don't know how to say that. Easy crafts for care partners to enjoy together. They're just simple ones that are really fun. And Pillar Box Blue, they have easy crafts using things you might have at home. So you don't have to go out and buy a lot of things. There's a zillion things you can do, believe it or not, with um, coffee filters. So you'd be surprised. But there's a lot of easy things that you can do together that are actually fun. Virtual tours, here's a few to get you started. Travelandleisure.com, they have a lot of travel tours. Good Housekeeping has tours of museums, zoos, and theme parks. Um, upgraded Points, they have the best, what they say are the best virtual tours of art, history, and science. So you can go to the different history museums and science museums. And then this exercise, Sherry Zach Morris, um, she specializes in gentle senior and chair yoga videos and DVDs. And sometimes I've used these with our seniors, but they're actually really fun. They're to popular music that they would that you would know. Um, things from like the 60s. And many are available on YouTube. And then silversneakers.com, a lot of low impact types of exercises for seniors. Sensory, doTERRA.com, that's where you can get essential oils. And you know you can usually find them um, at places like Whole Foods, but um, if you go online, they're a lot less expensive. And there's a company called Healthline.com. And if you're wondering, how would I use essential oils? Are they worth buying? And just information about what they are and how they can be used. Then Amazon, you can also purchase the essential oils and diffusers. And I had a picture of a diffuser, if you don't know what it is. They're electric and you can pour in a little bit of the essential oil and it will um, spread it throughout the room. So, and then another place to go, you've probably been to Bath and Body Works, but if you haven't, they carry a lot of scented candles, lotions and care products and a lot of fun um, scents. And they also have a lot of seasonal things. So. It's especially fun to go there during the holidays. Okay. Reading. Um, audiobooks, if you didn't know, you can, if you have a library card, you can rent or download audiobooks. And I think it's usually for two weeks. And so you can listen to books um, by downloading through your local library, audible.com. And then there's another one that has thousands of books online, openculture.com. And if you're looking for a tablet for your loved one, um, the one that I would highly recommend is the IN2L tablet. It's made specifically for seniors, and we have them now at our open circles. Um, but I have, right now I have one member that has one at home. And they're loaded with things specifically for seniors. They're really easy to operate. Um, so it isn't like learning a lot of new things. They're very easy to operate and they're really fun. So if you go to um, the website there, IN2L, um, and what that stands for, it's, not, it's never too late. So it's never too late to learn some technology and participate with technology. So, Anyway, I hope that this will help you and your loved ones find some opportunities because really when you're talking about engaging people, it's really opportunities for making memories. That's what I think of it as. Um, I spent a lot of time with my mom when she was aging and so did my, um, my two sons. And um, yeah, finding opportunities for engagement and it will be some of the best memories you'll have. So making those memories together. So be, at the end of this, after I'm done talking about this, I do have a really easy craft that I want to go run through with you. So, but I do want to thank you for joining me today. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in music therapy from University of Minnesota, and I've spent over 30 years working with seniors, and I just love it. Okay, you can go to the next.
So at the end of the day, all that matters is love and memories. So make sure you give it and make sure you make them. So this is an easy craft idea for seniors, but it's something that anybody of any age can do. So this is a do-it-yourself coffee mug. So you wanna buy a cheaper coffee mug, like a dollar store mug, and rubbing alcohol, which you likely have at home, cotton balls or paper towels, Q-tips. Um, if you go to any of the craft stores, look for Sharpie oil-based paint markers. Um, I su strongly suggest the medium point, and you can get them in a variety of colors and metallics. And stickers, if you wanna do stickers, um, painter's tape or masking tape, a cookie sheet, and you're also going to use your oven. So first thing you wanna do is wash your mug, and then you're gonna prepare where, uh, where you plan to use your, you're gonna use it by cleaning it with a cotton ball. So you're gonna use it on one side. So use a cotton ball or a paper towel and alcohol and clean it really well. Um, it'll remove the oil, oils from it, and it'll help the paint adhere to the coffee mug. So you're gonna put stickers on or tape if you wanna have a design. And you saw um, in that first picture, there, was a, there were letters. So you can have a letter, you could have a picture, um, just an idea with a sticker. And you clean around the sticker with alcohol, again, after pressing it on, okay? If your markers are new, a lot of times you have to prime them. So you press them on a paper towel or paper till you get them to fill with paint. And the care partner, you would probably have to do this for them. So you choose your colors and you can start making dots or anything else you desire around your stickers or taped off design area. You're gonna be sure to fill in closely around the edges, use one color at a time and allow a few minutes between colors so it'll dry. So it's something you can just sit back and work on. And when you're done and after the paint dries, you're gonna take off the stickers or the tape and any paint that seeped in under your sticker or if you made a mistake, just put a little alcohol on the Q-tip and you'll be able to remove it. So you're gonna let your mug, now see here's the picture. So there's a letter there, there's a letter A. It could be anything, it could be a circle. It could be, you could just fill that whole square and not even have a sticker there. Um, if you make a holiday one, you could have a, a star or a Christmas tree that you stick on there and then use holiday colors around it, just little dots. There's, the ideas are endless. So you let the mug dry for 24 hours and then you're gonna put it on a cookie sheet in a cold oven. So then turn the oven on to 375 and just let the mug sit in there for an hour. Then you turn off, turn off the oven and just leave, leave it in there so it'll cool inside the oven. The baking may cause the colors to darken a bit, but um, you wanna hand wash it just to be careful with it. Um, but they're very usable mugs. It's a fun thing to do. What a great um, present that you could give at holiday time to loved ones. You can make presents. So, and just a fun project to do. There are literally thousands of very easy projects that cost very little. So once a week or every couple of weeks, you could do some kind of an art project. So, but this was an easy one I wanted to show. And again, the ideas for craft projects are absolutely limitless. So does anyone have any questions? Well, this is Caitlin chiming in again. Um, I'm looking at the Q&A here and it doesn't look like we have any questions right now. Um, but maybe let's wait a minute just to see if anyone now at the end has any questions they want to uh, add. Um, during this time, again, I want to wholeheartedly thank Janine for putting together this presentation for us. Um, just so many wonderful resources for caregivers that you put together. So thank you so much. Um, and like Janine said, um, we'll have the slides available afterwards. Um, any professionals who are looking for a CEU, I can also send you a CEU for this presentation as well. Um, so just reach out to me and I will send that to you if you're looking for a CEU. Cool. I, think, I think the hardest thing is just getting started. So when you're thinking about 
what am, in the world am I going to do with my loved one? Now they're stuck at home and I just don't know what to do with them. They can't go to a day program. Um, people can't visit them. I can't take them out as much. What in the world am I going to do? So I see this as a starting off point. I see there's a question. Yes. Um, oh, it's, it's actually not a question. It's thank you. <laughs> um, so from Kim. Yes, well, you're very welcome, Kim. And I'll give all the credit to Janine <laughs> um, for putting this together. And Kim, I will email you the CEU. So I'll write you down right away. Um, and actually, Janine, something I was going to add uh, when you were talking about travel programs. I know our residents here absolutely love travel programs because it's interesting. You feel like you're going somewhere, they're learning something new. And we have had a lot of success um, you, on YouTube with Rick Steves. Yeah. Rick Steves has all of his seasons of all of his travel shows on YouTube. And so we can just go on YouTube and go to Rick Steves and find almost endless programs. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing to do. Our folks here absolutely love the travel programs. So, and anything that, you know, you wish you could see. A lot of people like to travel, to, wish they could travel to the Holy Land, or they wish they could go to the Caribbean when it's cold in the winter. What a fun thing to do. Let's let's pretend we're, we're going someplace warm in the winter, right? It's just a fun yeah. thing. And right now with all the leaves turning, you know, to get out and go for drives, but also to go online because there are some beautiful travel videos um, out there with the fall mm -hmm. season. Yeah, um, another, we're, we're big on YouTube around here. And I know we also use um, on YouTube in the evening for some more quieter, relaxing music and relaxing images there is a YouTube channel called Quiet Quest, and it's all, um, the only videos they post are um, like kind of relaxing landscapes and then relaxing music. And that's been another um, big asset to have some relaxation time with some music and pleasant um, pictures. And uh, it's, it's, really, it's really incredible what you can find online. It really is. It's just such a wonderful thing. Um, there's another, I think it's on an app, but it's, I have it on my phone, actually. It's called Calm. And beautiful pictures and the sounds like rain and um, gentle breeze and the ocean. Mm -hmm. So, and those can be helpful if you have a person that has a lot of anxiety. What a wonderful thing. Let's take a little break here and put this on. Mm -hmm. so, I also have the Calm app, so. <laughs> you know. You know I know. I, I use the sleep stories every night to go to sleep, so, yeah. Absolutely. They're very yeah. fun. Yeah. Well, um, but, but really and truly, the ideas are endless, but I think the biggest piece is, you know, where do I start? And I think getting started is is to figure out some kind of a schedule, you know, getting getting up for all of us. It's good to get up at the same time every day and we have our routines. Well, when COVID hit, a lot of those routines changed or maybe there is no routine anymore. So people tend to stay in bed longer and they're not getting up and moving because they're not getting out. So it's pretty easy to get deconditioned too during this time of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so truly a lot of our folks, we just reopened a few weeks ago and we have small numbers coming, but a lot of people are deconditioned because they haven't been out doing their walks. They haven't been exercising as much, you know, and they just feel so isolated. So, you know, those exercise videos, moving to music, whatever you can do to get moving, but really to have to start out with having some kind of time every day we're going to get up and have breakfast at such and such a time we're going to maybe exercise to a video or turn on some music and move to the music um, go for a walk outside when the weather cooperates with us um, and while we still can um, and just have set times it doesn't have to be back-to-back -back programs that you're doing all day long it's just finding things to do together to engage their minds and their bodies and to keep them active. 
because this is very a very depressing time for a lot of our folks and you know seniors um with isolation it's very easily to to be depressed i know sometimes i feel down about it you know but if i was stuck inside all day every day um i can't imagine how hard that is so mm -hmm. i commend all of you that are staying home with your loved ones and trying to find new ways to engage them so i hope that this is giving you just some ideas mm -hmm. yeah and and good timing as well as we're coming into the fall and winter which often for older adults can be more isolating because we're driving less because of snow or ice and we're not going outside for walks as much um, again snow and ice so hopefully this was good timing as well for activities to carry us through at home over the winter <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah. and i also i really the thought about having a virtual chat group with with their friends that are also isolated if you do it a set time every week um, whether it's on facetime or zoom um, the same thing with um, family members family members that live far or can't visit what a wonderful thing that we can go online and um, I strongly suggest just setting up some dates that everyone can get together online because that can make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a wonderful idea, Janine. All right, well, looking at the Q&A, we haven't had any more questions come in. So Janine, you must have covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, if, if anyone has any further questions, um, feel free to reach out to me or Janine, uh, and we'll be happy to get connected and um, hopefully help you out with whatever your question is. And again, thank you everyone for attending today, and thank you to Janine. This was fantastic, and uh, we hope that this uh, helped provide you with some ideas and resources to take you through uh, later this year. Well, thank you. Yeah. Oh, all right. I see one more question. Oh, yeah, a, a comment. Um, thank you for reminding me how I can do some easy craft activities. Yeah. Reminder to go to Hobby Lobby for ideas. Smiley face. I think we'll <laughs> plan the mug idea for Christmas gifts. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. 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 Well, th thank you very much, Caitlin, for sponsoring this and for inviting me to do this because it was my it's my pleasure. I loved it. Yeah, well, you're very welcome. Thank you so much, Janine. Okay, bye-bye. All right, bye.